Hi, I'm Sina, your favorite. We talk in each episode, I talk about it. Do whatever you say in the comments. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about terrestrial isopods. And uh, there's like various names for them, um, which I haven't really heard before because they're all in English. But pill bugs, uh, roly polies, sow bugs, and uh, you know, apparently like an endless list of names for these. So they seem to be pretty popular. At least among children, I suppose, because otherwise they wouldn't have so many names. But yeah, um, so I, I found these kind of, you know, on, you know, kind of as a side note. And uh, I didn't really, I mean, I knew of their existence, obviously, because they're everywhere. But uh, I didn't really know too much about them. And I found them quite interesting, especially after I discovered that these were actually... Uh, crustaceans and not insects uh, you know insect I don't know I, I don't really like insects too much as like something that I would you know treat more pet like um, so I you know I can I like I quite I like crustaceans like you know, crayfish and crabs and that kind of stuff so uh, naturally it helps if isopods like terrestrial ones there's also like oh my god I can't read this I can't read this at all. Oh, I feel I feel like this is not really the kind of level. <laughs> uh, you know, they're probably better than normal players here. But anyway, um, so there's like the isopods that live in like water bodies, um, and you know the ones that live on land uh, that you know under these you know three thousand names. Um, you know, these are also isopods, but, uh, you know, they are not insects, they're crustaceans. So basically like crabs, uh, except they don't have pincers or something. Um, or however they're called. But anyway, so, yeah. Uh, and I found, uh, which, you know, quite surprising. Ah! I found out that people actually keep these as pets. And... They are available in so many different color variants. They kind of remind me of guppies a bit. Uh, I'm not sure how great you can breed them, but I mean, they breed very readily. Not sure how well the colors combine and stuff. They're probably more like shrimp in terms of like coloration, uh, where if you mix two nice looking shrimp, the color that comes out is kind of more unpredictable and most of them return to some kind of wild type. Although, you know, there's many ice pots that are you know, looking fancy by, you know, by nature. No! That was the wrong angle. Um, and, yeah. Uh, so, I would highly recommend you kind of, you know, do some little online search of terrestrial isopods. Oh, because these are really, you know, there's so many different, um, you know, color variation and, uh, I guess, species. Uh, and for example, there's one that's called Rubber Ducky, which apparently is quite popular. Uh, they look like, you know, the, the face of them looks like the front of a duck. Uh, so it looks very cute and very nice. And I kind of like it if there's a plant or an animal that looks like or reminds you of something else. Um, oh no! Wow. Wow. I mean, that was almost good. Except... Wow, okay. I definitely did something to save this. Ah! Ooh, that looks good. If that goes in, I would be very happy. Don't, don't. Ah! Okay, wonderful. Okay, wonderful. That is pretty nice. I thought the opponents were a bit better, but maybe the first one was a fluke or mm, I was just not very good. Uh, so yeah, so isopod. So yeah, rubber ducky is like a nice one. Um, there's like, uh, the ones that are easy. Oh, that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. Oh, you could defend from them. So, uh, there's like pandas uh, as a variant uh, that have like, you know, a so, sort of like a whitish, uh, blackish pattern. Um, and, I mean, what kind of, I mean, there's like very colorful ones with various... I don't know. I mean, they probably are trying to imitate some kind of a predator. Um, and that's why they're kind of colorful. Um, there's like some 
you know, I don't know, but I, I feel like there's not that many predators like in Europe, for example, but in Italy, there's, uh, there's also isopods that are quite colorful. Uh, there's like some that have like these green dots in a regular pattern, like a, uh, you know, sort of, I guess like a dice in that sense. Uh, and yeah, uh, just, you know, do some little search to see what kind of color variants there are. And that is really interesting. And I also found out that, you know, there's quite a few people who are actually keeping these as pets. Uh, even though they are probably more regarded as sort of some insects. Ah! Oh! Um, and, you know, it's it's a very, it's, I don't know, it's a very rare find. It's, it's very difficult, I guess find out about this if you don't ra randomly have to stumble upon it like with this video I guess okay so oh I don't know it, it feels like weird playing against these ha I'm just glad that I can hit the ball somewhat decently but oh that one was also pretty good So essentially, um, there's there's actually like a community of people no that are keeping these, and they also are easy to breed, and that makes them kind of very interesting to keep not as a singular individual pet that you give a name and keep for 15 years, but something more along the line of no something more along the line of uh, you have oh that's pretty bad. Uh, you have like, you know, a, a population of something, which is pretty nice. Oh. And you can also buy these online. I mean, it depends where you are, I guess. But uh, you can, you can of course, if you're like in so, some more tropical regions uh, that are more warmer and stuff, you can probably find them outside. That's over time. Oh, maybe not. Oh, over time. So you can probably find them in... Ooh, that seems pretty okay. Uh, and, you know, outside, if you just wanting to catch some for free. Uh, depending where you live... Oh, that's pretty nice. Depending on where you live, you have, you know, fancier looking ones or just, you know, plain uh, black ones, I guess, would be standard. Um, and, yeah, uh, you have to probably search. Like, if you're in, in, in Thailand, for example, there's, like, these, these uh, limestone caves, apparently, where these rubber duckies are living. So that's probably pretty difficult to get these uh, and probably most people living there have never really heard of them. A roasted blueprint, I mean okay I guess, uh, you know we'll just go for the next one. Uh, but one thing that was very kind of surprising, you know, you, I mean A you could buy them online which is, I mean, which was surprising but the prices were really surprising because for something that seems to breed this easily Although the, the like the breeding cycle seems to be slower than like of shrimp, of shrimp for example, um, so you know with shrimps you have typically like once a month you get like some some reproducing or some uh, eggs and some little shrimplets. Then um, they take like I don't know maybe six months to be able to ha grow up and get eggs of them of their own. Um, but with the, the isopods, it seems more like this is like roughly double and for some species probably much longer. So they kind of carry for, uh, they carry for like two months-ish. Uh, they also seem to be like sort of life bearers. So having, you know, finished isopods after these two months. And then essentially... No, I guess, I don't know. I think, I mean, guppies are life bearers. They have basically, they, they produce, like, the first time these small ones are leaving the, uh, the mother, they, they are basically finished guppies, or, you know, very small guppies, but, you know, sort of finished. And they don't just scatter the eggs around. Oh, that's pretty bad. They don't just scatter the eggs around. Oh, that seems like an opportunity so they they carry the young ones like uh, underneath their you know their whatever their their body like the female ones and then after two months they basically are finished isopods 
And so they reproduce rather quickly for like, you know, general, like, I don't know, for insects, maybe not. I mean, some insects only reproduce like once a season, so that is even worse. But especially, you know, it's much quicker than humans at the very least. Um, so yeah, you can, you can keep a nice population. And the cool thing about those is they are very easy to, ah, uh, they're very easy to take care of uh, because they, they don't require anything fancy they don't produce a lot of waste you don't need to clean up after them which is a major uh, major concern because I'm a lazy toddler uh, that's why I don't like pets that ah uh, I don't like pets that need a lot of like cleanup um, and that's why isopods are very good like fish and other aquarium stuff because they can just be kept inside there and they use the aquarium as their party essentially uh, and yeah, the kind of the bacteria and uh, microorganisms are cleaning up everything. Nah. And with the isopods, it's kind of similar, but there is some kind of issue, and I'm still trying to figure out what's like the optimal sort of like my aquarium way of keeping stuff. How I can just leave things alone and definitely without actually having to worry about things going awry. Um, right now, it's like. You know, it's also even like recommended to use these plastic polypropylene boxes that you use for storage. Um, you know, these kind of sort of flexible milky plastic ones. And these are reasonably priced. Ah! Uh, these are reasonably priced. That, that was pretty bad. So they are reasonably priced, but... Um, yeah, of course they're not very see-through from the side or I mean a bit milky so I would okay I shouldn't just flip every every chance um, but you know they're not the best to see through from the side but if you have like a you know not a you know a rather small one uh, then it's very easy to kind of take a look from the top and see them and you know seeing the ice spots from top is much more like enjoyable than seeing them from the sides Oh, that was pretty bad. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel, I feel like these kind of small boxes that aren't that tall um, are pretty... Oh. <laughs> oh. I guess, you know, I mean, I'm a toddler. You can't really complain about this. So, that's essentially... Ah! Uh... Okay. So, if you want to keep these... Then get yourself one of these plastic boxes or you know any container that doesn't poison them um and you know i guess it could be some kind of glass or something um and then you put in uh basically i mean what is recommended by like the, the quote-unquote experts which are kind of selling these things and breeding them for profit um although i guess you know i don't know the there's a limited level of professionalism I would say because it's a very niche thing still um, but you know there are some people that are just having their basement full of these boxes essentially and just breeding these and what they recommend is that you put in just some you know dirt and you know some potting mixes and some have really complicated mixes for oh it's my teammate AFK some have really complicated potting mixes with like tens 10 different ingredients and stuff and uh, that is you know I don't know they just I'm pretty sure they haven't scientifically evaluated this <laughs> to be uh, necessary that was a rage quit I'm sure uh, they probably just um, you know just threw a bunch of stuff together they thought would be nice but kind of I don't know it's very complicated and very expensive so I don't really like these very complicated solutions uh, I like things to be as simple as possible and therefore, ah, uh, and therefore what I'm trying to do currently is I'm trying to use play sand, uh, which is very easily available for like three bucks per 25 kilograms. And it's very, you know, it's very nice stuff. I mean, it's, it's great for toddlers and building sand castles and stuff. So, uh, you know, a very nice kind of resource to have. And it holds moisture. Uh, it kind of does, you know, it does kind of stick and you can build stuff from it. And so you can bury inside this thing and it doesn't collapse. 
Um, and it does it does retain some moisture, otherwise you wouldn't be able to build some sand castles out of it. So I oh So I think that is you know I, I think that's a pretty good kind of inert material that doesn't really uh, contribute to any waste. Uh, unlike what the the kind of you know breeder stuff recommend where they just put some some compost and other stuff in there. Which kind of goes counter contrary to what you actually want in these boxes uh, and that would oh and that would be essentially over time uh, the you, you're putting in like food like kitchen scraps and leaf litter and stuff which is basically they're, they're basically like you can have a little compost of your own um, and they basically take they basically take you know anything that is rotting or you know organic uh, and they eat that and then of course uh, they you know kind of digest it and produce waste and if this kind of waste accumulates especially like with ammonia and nitrites and nitrates and stuff um, that's like the same in the aquarium but the problem is that in this kind of setup you don't have any plants to filter this stuff out so you're putting stuff in but you're not taking anything out which is a bit of a problem so there's not really too much you can do about this unless you put all of these boxes in some light and let some plants grow and make sure these plants do not touch the border or something uh, because then the ice pots can't just walk out because ice pots cannot climb smooth surfaces. Oh, wait, wait, how can I exit? They cannot climb smooth surfaces, so, you know, that's why you keep them in these boxes. Um, but, you know, if you have, like, some kind of uh, plant that's growing out of this obviously then your isopods are going to just leave and probably die in your room somewhere because it's not very night moist so they need moisture and i will definitely be kind of reporting on my findings but so far i'm trying the sand option um because it's you know from what i could gather about these creatures it's like you know it retains moisture which is the primary thing they need and the rest is basically just food where you basically put in stuff like kitchen scraps like potato peels or carrots and stuff uh and then i'll just see how things go and you know i mean right now you have to every you know six or six months plus you probably have to just set up a new box and uh, take out everything um and you know clean it up and put the isopods in the new box to basically remove the ammonia uh, or it's probably nitrite nitrates at that point but you know it still accumulates over time and it becomes toxic so you know I guess there, there would be two options you could either flood it uh, which would not be that great for the isopods so you could make a hole at the bottom and basically just water it very very well so that everything kind of gets washed out or you could again use a plant to kind of use that as fertilizer and then you just cut the plant every once in a while uh, and that will basically remove all the material or I guess if you have a plant in there you could just use if it's a plant that the ice pots will eat you could just close the system and just have the ice pots feed off of the kind of the dead leaves of the plant and stuff and uh, you know keep it going in a natural circle but the problem is you have to have some light available and if you already have house plants that's probably a problem so yeah so for now the the approach is you have to every you know every few months you have to take a new box and set it up anew and you know transfer over the isopods which will be of course with the sand approach not that difficult because you know there's not there's just sand and it's easy to see the isopods on that sand but if you have like dirt and everything, then it's going to be pretty difficult to actually find all the isopods. But yeah, uh, so I'd recommend to put some uh, some research or some looking up into this because they're very kind of nice pets that are easy to keep. You don't really need to spend a lot of time on them if you don't want to. And, you know, they, they have look very cute and very nice to watch in that sense. It's like a terrarium version of a pet, uh, but in the... You know inexpensive and easy mode that you can even catch them outside so yeah bye